Today I would like to work on uh, planning for Unit 3. We'll be completing Unit 2, which is based on the study of ancient Egypt first, and then we move on to ancient Mesopotamia. We're studying specifically um, ancient Sumer, and that's the earliest uh, part of the Mesopotamian civilization. We're going to be discussing literature that was found on tablets like this with what kind of writing? Cuneiform. Okay, we can cuneiform. work together to get something that's truly interdisciplinary. Are you going to be having them make cuneiform tablets this year? Yeah, they are, yeah, they'll be doing that in our class. My concern is that the experience can be somewhat authentic. The tablets will definitely take two weeks of their time, mm -hmm. sort of going over the language and then and then planning out and actually producing. Um, but that should leave two more weeks. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you can construct something. All right, that sounds great. When the kids go to the Met and they see the cuneiform the cylinder seals, they mm -hmm. just flip out. They're like, oh man, there's the yeah. cuneiform tablet. Oh, this, this was the this, this side. Was no, but what about, what about 60? 60 was just down. 60 was, 60 was, 60 was, 60 was, 60 was down. Bigger number, bigger number down, like bigger. Okay. In math, we're going to use cuneiform to write the uh, times tables, maybe eight times tables, whatever we decide to do. They had a sexagesimal math system, and this leads to 360 degrees in a circle, which is really something that we're going to do with measuring. It leads into our geometry unit. Our time, 60 minutes in an hour, 60 seconds in a minute. You want to finish column two. Sierra. 18. 18. 18. Oh, wait, what do you think? The basic thing for science, we'll talk about archaeoastronomy, um, how their buildings related to, you know, for making star sky observations at night, uh, power of the priest and being able to predict celestial events. And we're also talking about the winter solstice. We're keeping track of the apparent motion of the sun. We did it at the equinox and then at the solstice. Well, what I've been hoping to do is to have a performance piece that will take place on the uh, night of the concert. The celebration of Zagmuk, which is, it corresponds to winter solstice, and that uh, really preceded the holidays that we now celebrate. The children have to make the costumes, they have to research the costumes. Um, there's dancing involved. Kate Muth is going to be working with the children in, in how to actually walk. Sumerians danced as a row and then a row would catch up. And then a row... Taking the information that mm -hmm. they need to know and putting it to movement ties in for those children that are kinesthetic learners and need to actually be moving mm -hmm. in order to own the information. I wrote the script for a very short pageant, mm -hmm. but it involves uh, Inanna, the goddess, entering. Oh, hail Inanna! And Inanna is this wonderful story that the kids can really relate to. It's really a cycle of life, and it starts with a young girl and her passage into womanhood. It involves a king. Uh, it makes it clear to the children the shift from the matristic society to patriarchal civilization. So we're constantly weaving this theme in and out of whatever we're doing. You know, being a new teacher, I'm kind of looking forward to the integration process. Inanna, who's the goddess of love, fertility, and war. The story has to do with some sexuality and some reproduction issues, which is another unit that we have to address this year. It's going to be a two-week unit. We still need to hear from, I think, your integration. The first part would be uh, myself coming into the classes, visiting, and lecturing on the Sumer diet. Make a paste. I Make start out with how do we know how do we really know what they ate? In this unit, I would talk about the first farmers, the history of grains. They had eight different, they had some pulses, they had chickpeas and peas, yeah. and which is a good source of protein. And um, wheat, the domesticated wheat. And we could make products with wheat and possibly barley. So we would make either flatbreads, unleavened breads, or leavened breads. Mm -hmm. We would culminate with a menu that would integrate your unit with a whole lunch menu in the cafe where the whole school participates in the birth of a civilization menu. Mm -hmm. So What I wanted to add also to what we talked about is the service learning project. Last year we had an opportunity to um, Skype, have a communication with Iraqi refugees that were in Damascus in Syria. Hello, what is your name? My name is Aya. This year, I'm thinking um, along the lines, and you know, I'd just like to open this up to you, of having a fundraiser for uh, Native Without Nation yes. to raise money for an organization that uh, helps the refugees in Damascus, okay. the Iraqi refugees. Is there any way that we could um, open a dialogue again? Like you said, you had the Skype communication with them, but that's kind of 
a group in a group, is there a way that the kids can be communicating with the other kids um, kind of on a regular basis? There's a blog involved, so the kids could talk regularly. They could make friends with one person if they chose. And, and I think that's a good idea, too, if we could get a component involved so that the children are um, in making a friend. It's a framework, and I think we're all working along the same lines, or at least thinking together. And thank you. Thank you, you all. Continue. Yeah. Mm -hmm.